welcome our guest, Mr. Corey Ryan Forrester. Hi, how are you? I'm Corey. Good to be here. <laughs> welcome, sir, as if you haven't been here for the last 38 minutes. Hi, Dee. Um, and as I welcome you to the guest segment, <laughs> as we chat here for a little bit, I also want to shout out everybody who's watching in the live chat, those of you that are joining us. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, if you're catching this on the replay, thanks for checking it out. Hit the subscribe button. Remember to add us to your rotation, whether it's podcast feed, YouTube, wherever it is. In the off chance, Corey, and I don't know how this is possible because, as you said, this is a very specific Venn diagram of you and us and Star Wars. Um, in the off chance, there's somebody that's watching or listening that doesn't know who you are and how you got here. Um, tell us a little bit, you know, quickly about who Corey is, what you do, that kind of stuff. Uh, I was I'm a Croatian submariner uh, <laughs> who is here on an expired visa. Uh, no, my name is. Uh, yeah, I'm Corey Ryan Forster. I'm a stand up comedian. Uh, I also have a podcast uh, with several of them uh, called Putting on Airs with Trey Crowder. It comes out on Fridays. You can get it wherever you get your podcast. Got one called Well Read. Comes out Wednesdays. You can get that wherever you get your podcast. And I have a sub stack. It's over at bonuscorey.com. That's a cool place to find all the stuff that I'm doing on account of I don't tour much at the moment on account of I have a baby. And he that's is right. you do the, have a baby. He's he really is the cool. apple of my eye. So that's, that's right. me. Excellent. And oh, also, I would like to say this. If you yeah. are near the Chattanooga area on March 2nd, huh? What's that? I'm just pointing at you. Pointing at me. Yeah. If you're yeah. in or around the Chattanooga area on March 2nd, I am making my pro wrestling in ring debut at the Scenic City Rumble. Uh, you can get tickets at SCIWrestling.com. I'm going to get my butt whipped uh, to benefit uh, East Hamilton Middle School. They had a fire, and uh, I'm going to be in the Royal Rumble, or excuse me, the Buttercream Dream. My alter That's ego right. is going to be in the Royal Rumble, and I'm very excited to be doing that. So if you're in Chattanooga, SCIWrestling.com. Get them tickets and come support the champ. And what's the date of that one more time? March 2nd. March Chattanooga, 2nd, Tennessee. Not, yeah. not far away at all. Come um, down, brother. Well, that's fantastic. And I have to say, I first met you or reached out to you or pestered you to be on Podcast of the Wills a couple of years ago now because during COVID, during lockdown, you were doing one of your videos that you put on Twitter and you were going off on politics and saying a lot of things that I super agreed with. But as you were doing it in the space that was clearly in like a loft space at your house, this on the one. wall behind you <clears throat> was some framed Star Wars art. That's and right. I thought, I like this guy. I've been following him. I like the things he says. And if anybody has framed Star Wars art on the wall in their house, they're enough of a fan that I want to go, <laughs> hey, let's talk about Star Wars because <laughs> we like the same thing. So that's how we ended up connecting up over the years. And you've come on and hung out with us a bunch of times. We always have fun. Um, so I want to get into that for a little bit. And we talked about this for a minute before the show. We didn't, you saved some of it so that we could get into it on the show. Um, you're a huge Star Wars fan. You are also an outspoken voice, certainly on social media, when it comes to politics, when it comes to dumb people. Um, <laughs> and you know, I am a dumb person. I hey, guess we're I'm all dumb hating. People. Yeah. It's, it's just varying degrees of dumb. But I want to talk to you a little bit because this is certainly a conversation that Pete and I have a lot about the nonsense that we see in fandoms obviously mm -hmm. we see it in star wars that's the circle that or the pool that we swim in most of the time i know it exists in marvel lord of the rings star trek you name it anywhere where a group of people I like find something. that everyone seems to agree with each other and be kind i don't know of which you speak <laughs> exactly i see and on no that note if that's what you're alluding to that's sir right. I on will that not. note the okay. chain is off tell us what your thoughts are on some of this kind of negativity, some kind of this hatred, and how do you respond to it? Obviously, you make good videos and call people out, but... It makes... No, the only thing that I've really ever said about this publicly, unless it was on this show, was... I remember one time I made a video, because I, I was, like, at my breaking point with... Like, this specifically happened to me the other day, where... And this is a particular type that I've never understood. I don't understand tribalism in anything, like, at all. Like, at least in politics... I can sort of wrap my head around it because in politics, there mm -hmm. is like life and death policies at play. So it makes sense to me that someone would get passionate about that when like 
let's say, I don't know, bodily autonomy is on the table. I understand getting tribal to a certain point over that for sure. But when it comes to media and art and things like that, I do not understand it at all, right? So this has happened to me with, because I think wrestling falls into this too, right? I've had sure. it with wrestling and I've had this happen to me with, uh, uh, we'll use, we're going to use Marvel and DC as an example, but it bucks up against Star Wars, right? Not sure. long ago, I had gone and seen the latest Ant-Man, the Quantumania, right? And it was getting trashed online. It was getting super trashed online. And I went and seen it afterwards because I don't give too much of a shit what people say. Like, I like Paul Rudd and I like Ant-Man and I like going to Marvel movies. Dude, I've gone to plenty that I walked out and went, yeah, not really my cup of tea. Now, I didn't then go online and go, God damn it, Marvel owes me fucking money. It's a gamble. It's like buying fruit at the supermarket. Sometimes the banana sucks. I'm not calling Kroger <laughs> afterwards. You know what I'm saying? Like That's exactly it, right. You, you take a gamble. You know what I'm saying? I don't know mm -hmm. what to tell you. It, it doesn't matter. I've had way more good bananas than I've had bad bananas. I'm going to be thankful for those. And I'm right. just, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm the type of person that like, if I see something that I don't like or I hear a song that I don't like, I'm going to move on with my fucking life because, and this is very important, I have one, right? Yep. I have one mm -hmm. and I don't make it my entire personality. Anyways, I'd seen Ant-Man and Quantumania and I rather enjoyed it. And I think a large part of my enjoyment towards it was probably because so many people had trashed it. So I went into it with my expectations like super mm -hmm. low and it wasn't complete dog shit. So I was like, oh, you know, I, so I just I just put it on. I was like, hey, I just saw Ant-Man Quantumania. I was I really I really enjoyed it. Thought it was thought it was a good movie. And this is I was expecting people to come on there and go, if you thought that was good, you're a dumb motherfucker. But what I got was a, a several people that commented and they were being serious. They go, I thought you were a I thought you were a Batman guy. You know what I mean? They were like, I thought you were a Batman guy. And I was like, what do you mean? And they were like, <laughs> I thought you were, I thought Batman was like your guy. And I was like, he is. And then there's a couple of people that are like, uh, Marvel's or uh, DC's better. And I was like, yeah, I saw the Batman too. What the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? All these people get like, to choose. you have to choose. I'm like, bro, I've got more than an hour and a half a week. You know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? And then we start, but with, with so it, it just blows my mind. That there's these people that like, number one, they make a brand, they make a corporation their personality that they go that they, they go to bat for them like a person loves dc so much that they've got to go shit on all this marvel stuff but then there's people who have made star wars their entire personality so now when a star wars movie doesn't live up to what they wanted it to be what they wanted it to be they like there's dude there's people that like they call for Kathleen Kennedy's head. And I don't mean that as a figure of speech. I mean, yeah. that is like old school medieval, like we should go mm -hmm. fucking kill her because right. they think that something is owed to them because they bought this much merch because they've supported it, whatever the fuck. And mm -hmm. there's sometimes where I want to go, okay, guys, I'm not saying far be it from me to say only kids should enjoy Star Wars because that's obviously that's not true. I'm an adult and I enjoy Star Wars. Right. But sometimes you need to go, bro, you are 45 years old and it is kind of for kids. So maybe <laughs> it wasn't fucking for you. Have you ever yeah. thought about that? Like when the movie came out in 1977, right? That was the first one, right? Mm -hmm. 1977. Yep. Dude, it absolutely was made for kids. It's just that. It was so goddamn good that everyone liked it. Right. And if you don't think that Return of the Jedi was, I mean, dude, everyone knows that was made for kids because the Ewoks were so divisive. Like, that's why a bunch of people shit on the Ewoks, because mm -hmm. it was explicitly made to sell merch to kids, right? right. They've yep. always been for kids. It's just that they've been so good at the same time. Toy Story was for kids. It's just that it was so good that adults liked it. So the second Star Wars, the second you don't like Star Wars, all of a sudden it's them that did something wrong instead of it just wasn't for you. And I'm like, bitch, it never really has been. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? I do. And nobody I owes you a did. goddamn thing. And frankly, 
I just, it just, it's fine to not like something. It's totally mm -hmm. fine to not like something, but it the is. entitlement of, and I don't want to cause any heat because maybe y'all are friends. I don't know. But this <laughs> Star Wars theory motherfucker, he, do, but here's my problem with him. If he, like, when he actually watches a thing and then comments on it, I at least go, well, you watched it, so you have the right to talk about it. But this motherfucker will, not even a trailer will drop. They'll just announce the concept of a show, and he's already got a video calling it woke. And I'm like, bitch, because there was a black person in it? So they just can't be in stuff now? They can't, I, like, they'll, they'll post something, and they'll be like, I don't know, like some new Jedi's bald, and he's like, oh, they're non-binary. And it's like, what? Oh, so I'm non-binary because I don't have hair? Like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, everything don't have to be made for you, and it's totally okay if it's not. But just like well, go watch something else. And to hear right. these people talk about it, the last nine things Star Wars has put out, they've hated. I got to tell you something. Go find something else, motherfucker, because this shit ain't for you anymore. <laughs> so at this point, you are purposefully watching something you don't like, which makes you a masochist. So go instead of buying $30 tickets one after another. Pay a lady one time $100 <laughs> to step on your balls while you wear a gag and then go to a therapist and be done with it. That's what I have to say about those people. That's, I mean, you heard it here first, folks. Corey has opinions about things. In case you didn't know that, <laughs> here we are. Well, and, and I agree with you completely. And I want to get into another side of that just for briefly in a second. But you're exactly right. And I've said this for, you know, years now. I always compared it to like a restaurant. If you go to a restaurant and you have a terrible experience, you're not going back to that restaurant. But these people go to that restaurant, have a terrible experience, and then they go back five nights in a row, pay for right. the food just so they can complain about how bad the restaurant. Like, why are yes. you still here? That's I don't perfect. understand. And you, well, the thing is, like, you, you might, if you've been to that restaurant a bunch and it was good and you go and it's bad, you might go back one more time. Sure. If it's bad again, you might go back one more time. But after that, if, but after that, if you keep going back, that is your fault. That yeah. is now your fault. And if it's bad because the restaurant decided to change the menu, you don't get to call corporate and go, I want you to change the menu back because motherfucker, <laughs> it is That's not right. your Doesn't restaurant. It's not yep. your restaurant. It's not. It totally isn't. Well, and I want to look at this other side of it for just a minute. You talked about Star Wars theory, you talked about having videos made before we've even watched things. And it's not just him. This is an entire industry at this point, which is clickbait, rage videos like that fuels. And of course, you've seen it a bunch and we've all seen it in our political landscape where it's not about being informed. It's about being mad. And there's right. money to be made in being mad. And that's sure. bullshit because there are so many people in any fandom that are out there loving stuff, making content, having fun, Nobody hanging cares. out with cool people. And, you know, they get 25 views on a video. They get right. whatever. But if I decided tomorrow that we wanted to turn this channel into clickbait and nonsense and talk right. about how women are the worst, we'd make money hand over fist. We're not of going course. to do that because that's not who we are. Right. But it's infuriating that we've reached this point, I guess, in our culture overall, where that's the thing like, ooh, I can because. Believe it or not, people used to didn't feel that way about Star Wars theory. And early on, he was pretty, you know, straightforward and straight laced and had commentary and people liked what he had to say. But one day the dollars started rolling in and went, "Ooh, I can make money this way. And he's not the only one. A bunch of people do it. But that's really frustrating because that also mm -hmm. becomes the squeaky wheel that gets all the grease in a fandom. Yeah. I mean, and the thing is, like, you're right. You could 100 percent do it. It's just that you're not. And this is very important. I've been in this business a long time. You have to have one thing in order to do what he does, and you don't have it. You are not a huge piece of shit. You know what I mean? Like you have to, like, you have to be a huge piece of shit. Or like, you know, at a certain point, people go, Oh no, he's not really like that. He's just pretending for the money. If you pretend to be a piece of shit, you're a piece of shit. Unless he's literally, if he was acting in a movie, it'd be one thing. Right. But like, if you pretend to make your personality a piece of shit and hate women and make money, you're a pe like, you are that. that. That is who you are. If you do it enough, you become that. And it's just, 
again, man, if he would act, if he would watch a thing and make an educated go, I watch this and this is why I feel this is woke or this is why this is blah, blah, blah. I would still think he was pandering to a base of mouth breathing troglodytes who <laughs> don't deserve to smell my farts. But at least I'd go, he did the work. But he he don't even wait till the thing is out. He just goes immediately to this thing. You know, they cast an Asian in a thing. And therefore, if this is not all straight white men telling exactly the story that I want. The same story over and over again. The same story over and over. Then it's woke and I hate it. And dude, like, again, I don't I genuinely don't believe that he believes half the shit that he says. You know what I mean? Because I don't think that he's a, a complete moron because he puts out it's OK. It's a I, I think the stuff he says is shit, but it's all well made shit. Do you know what right. I mean? Yeah. You, you can't be a complete moron and do everything he does. He's very good at marketing. He's very good. Like, you know, it, I think it's actually dangerous when we look at the people like him and we just immediately mm-hmm. go, that person's an idiot because we're kind of letting them off the hook then. Yeah. You're letting them off the hook by going, he's an idiot. It's like, no, 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 bad, bad. You can't call bad people idiots because then it, it acts like it's not their fault. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's an asshole. I mean, dude's got 3 million subscribers on YouTube. He's not got more, idiot. you know, yeah, that there's design behind it. There's a lot behind right. it. Well, I mean, we could go on for this for a long time. Um, we're not going to because I want to get into a couple other fun things. Um there is, and we talked a little bit about this when we talked about the Acolyte, there's a lot of Star Wars on the horizon. There's a lot of things to be excited about. You mentioned Bad Batch, I think, before we got on air. Yeah. Um, you've seen a little bit of it. The new season's yeah. dropped. Um, we talked about Acolyte. I filled you in on that. You did watch Andor, I take it. We finally, yes, I know, a while it. back, you power walked watching Andor while you were walking in the park. Sure did, um, yeah, and I loved it. So we've got season two of Andor on deck you know sh- being shot almost done shooting if not completed shooting um we have skeleton crew which is going to be the jude law mo- um show that's going to be about kids lost in space has like an old amblin you live know, action yes live action okay, show cool. on disney plus Pump. um yeah that's going to be good stuff we have of course had the announcement at celebration in in, in london last year that ray daisy ridley's going to be back they're making another ray movie um that's exciting we have you know the, the story it's going to be the uh, supposed to be the refounding of the jedi order like okay. what's going to happen with ray you know creating the new jedi order is kind okay. of the tagline that cool. that's been given to it um the mando and grogu movie that we talked about in the news segment that's going to be coming out um so there's a bunch of stuff on deck of all those things what excites you the most dude just based I mean, on what you know well man i mean Mando and Grogu movie probably just because I love going to like I love that show so much mm-hmm. like that's probably my favorite Star Wars thing of the past well save for Rogue One because Jesus dude that that movie just rules so much but like of the Disney like plus era probably like Mando because like man just like I love how short the episodes are I love the like old school like just western serialized thing mm-hmm. and i love going to the movies and so seeing them on the big screen is going to be awesome however uh and i remember hearing about skeleton crew but i'd kind of it kind of ethered and you reminded me of that and the fact that jude law's in it i yep. love jude law so yeah. much he is dreamy uh so <laughs> that's probably number that's definitely number two. Okay. Number three, I, I think I, I can get behind uh, a Ray Jedi Order. I can get behind that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah I, and I think that they're going to really work hard to try and wash the stink off all the criticism that they faced for the, you know, for the, the sequels and stuff. Um, you know, whether yep. some, some was deserved, some was undeserved. Um, yeah. and I like her and I like Ray. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I could get pumped for yeah. that. And I think something that's exciting, of course, there's been press for the new movie that she's got that just came out in the last little bit. Um, she, of course, even in her press interviews for that new movie is being asked star Wars questions. And with this right. you know, new movie on deck, I really like that. She said this story is something she's excited about because she said she was glad to say, 
now hit me again in five years and let's see what you got. Like she wasn't in a hurry to come back to this. She wasn't opposed to it, but it was the story that made her go. Yes. Now's the time I would like to jump back into this. So that's intriguing because there's a good story and an actor who's at a place where she can go. I can take it or leave it. So show me what you got. And if we're not ready, let's try right. again when we are. Yeah. So I think that's really intriguing. Yeah. That's exciting. Based on the little bit of early press that we got. Um, so that's the beauty of star Wars is there's always more stuff on deck. And I love that we're at this place. And like we said, talking about, you know, being mad about it. If it's not all for you, that's great. The next thing's on its way. And maybe that one is for you. Like, or keep moving enjoy, along. or rewatch just, all the yeah. old stuff you liked. And guess what? There is a ton of other so movies and shows out there. I promise because I watch it's, so it's all many, out there. <laughs> I mean, you know, I live a privileged life and te technically like watching movies and TV is part of my job description. Like I watch, I literally watch at least two movies every day, seven days a week. So mm -hmm. I promise you there's more stuff than Star Wars out there to enjoy. There is. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Well, before we get done talking to you, you had a big 2023. You had a book come out. Sure you did. had a, you guys have a radio channel on Sirius. Like there's all kinds of cool Corey stuff. going. I mean, you had a kid. That's a pretty freaking big deal. Yeah. Was um, tell us about, you know, the big year that you just had and what else is coming up? What can we be looking forward to? Yep, wrote my second book. It's a travel log uh, around here and over yonder, um, at, which was great. I got to, I got paid. Uh, Harper Collins paid me to go to uh, the Great Britain and write about my experience over there. I also wrote about my experience growing up in the South and all the the rest of the country. You know, mm -hmm. from like my Southern point of view. Uh, so you can pick that up around here and over yonder. It's available wherever you get your books. It's also, I wrote it with Trey Crowder, uh, by the way. Um, and it's a series of essays, uh, you know, the round here part. That's about our experience in America growing up as Southern comedians. And like, basically the whole book is like, we, like when we're writing about New England, it's like what the stereotypes about the place is versus like what the reality is once we sort of got there. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of suggest you get the audible version because me and Trey read it. And so like you get to hear the words pronounced the way that we would prefer you to hear them said, you know what I mean? Uh, so that's cool. Uh, wrote the book. Um, shit, man. Uh, having the kid really took up a lot of the time. Uh, I guess, uh, what else did I do? Oh, our, uh, putting on airs just celebrated our hundredth episode. Hundredth episode. That was really cool. Um, there's a couple things that I can't talk about, but that we've got done behind the scenes, sort of pertaining to the the book. Um, okay. You know, I, you can probably infer what that is. The yep. book may become a thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you never that's, know. That's kind of exciting. Um, I'm currently working on directing my first uh, series of short films. So stay tuned for that, which you can uh, you can follow my Substack at bonuscory.com. Uh, I'll be you know posting updates on all that. It's a long time in the future, but I'm I'll be writing and directing and uh, starring in because I'm I'm cheap to hire for myself as an actor. Um, all that and uh, yeah, man, you know uh, things are things are cooking for me. It's been outstanding, it's, and you're still you're still writing. You've got you know the website, the newsletter, that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, for, people, for being a stay at home, you. people can find me. Yeah, for being a, I, I basically, I say I took off. This was my year of taking off work to raise a mm -hmm. kid, and I still got a lot done. So I'm excited yeah. to see what happens uh, when I go back to work. <laughs> uh, that's right. Eventually, you're going to have to go back and you yeah. know, not just hang out with your cool kid all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah.